Um, so thanks, Tucker. And for, for all of those of you who've been watching, you get a sense of the complexity of these issues that we were working through and uh, really just a taste of uh, the kind of things we were trying to balance. And so for our 16 meetings, really most of our time as a group was spent learning, uh, challenging each other, challenging the existing information and, and seeking new information. And then towards the final a few months of our, of our meeting period, uh, Tucker and, and colleagues were, were bringing forward the preliminary results from this uh, QMRA study, and then that helped us balance with the variety of things that Becky had been talking about before. So really until the end of our two-year period, we didn't have to make a lot of decisions other than should we keep, should we keep going, and we all were on the same page with uh, pushing forward until we can find some end point. When we finally did get to decisions, we, we wanted to maintain that initial interest in being consensus seeking, but we didn't want consensus to paralyze our ability to share good information with people who were looking for it. So we developed these grades of consensus. Uh, the consensus at its, at its uh, I guess, most pure level, its uh, most common usage is unanimous agreement. And we were able to reach consensus when all agreed uh, we could live with that. So all 19 perspectives around the table agreed they could live with a recommendation. Some were very supportive, some were maybe more hesitant, but all agreed uh, they could live with it. Near consensus was a very high level of agreement. So again, with 19, uh, all but one or two uh, is represented by near consensus. And close to near consensus is still a large supermajority, but it means that more than a few or more were, were in, not in agreement. I think generally three or four. No agreement was anything beyond that. So as I talk about recommendations, I'll also share the, the general level of uh, consensus that we reached. And I'll try to get through this quickly so we can move on to some discussion. All right, let's see. So first of all, we reached consensus on uh, a large number of what we call baseline recommendations. So again, this is, these are all points about which we uh, reached consensus, so everybody agreed. Uh, first, that if manure irrigation practices are to be used, then in all cases, they must follow all existing laws for animal waste and nutrient management. They must have and follow an NRCS 590 standard nutrient management plan. They must take appropriate steps to minimize drift and to ensure no overspray of irrigated manure. And you recall Becky talking about the difference of the drift versus the overspray. They must have suitable means of supervising and controlling their equipment. They can't just set it out and leave. They must have suitable means of determining relevant weather information because of those issues of wind uh, and UV exposure, those sorts of things. They must have means of preventing backflow if connected to a water source to prevent any contamination of groundwater. And they must ensure no human waste or septage is processed along with the uh, manure or processed wastewater. Also, if they're using a center pivot that we agreed that drop nozzles uh, should be used and that those nozzles uh, and pressure should be set for coarse or larger droplet size as Becky described. I also want to touch on a, a couple of points here. It's come up, uh, I think, a few times already, this concept of wetted perimeter. And for a traveling gun, wetted perimeter looks uh, like that. There's a, a line here. It's the point at which the uh, material is intended to be deposited and, and is, in fact, deposited. With a center pivot, that's more of a circular shape, of course, and with a traveling gun, it's, it's linear. When we talk about a setback distance, we mean the distance from whatever it is that is being set back from uh, to that wetted perimeter, so to the edge of the intended area of application. And we agreed uh, to various levels on a variety of setbacks. This was really the most challenging part of um, where can these things, where can these practices really be applied in a way that we consider uh, responsible. So within a road right of way, we agreed to near consensus, so all but one or two that there's really no need for an additional setback from the right of way of the road, not up to the road surface, but the road uh, right of way. Forests, we actually reach consensus. If there's a public forest with no recreational access, right up to the border is fine. Private forests, because of uh, different access issues, uh, near consensus, so within one or two. Adjacent ag pro properties. This is an issue for people who might be uh, farming a very particular way, neighboring fields. We had didn't reach consensus, but reached near consensus. Again, one or two not agreeing. Um, 
that it could go up to zero feet, so no setback essentially from pasture and, and crops that are not organic or raw consumed. And then close to near consensus, regardless of what kind of crop is grown with a range of zero to 50 feet. Dwelling was uh, the, probably the, the most difficult issue for us to addre address. We didn't really get to a consensus on that, but for, we reached near consensus, again, one or two, that a range of 500 to 750 feet was a realistic recommendation, depending on the conditions of wind speed and direction. And then again, for some situations uh, where the wind might be blowing away or on a bright day, uh, close to near consensus that you could get even closer than that. That's a very quick overview of um, what is really hours and hours of discussion and analysis. And just to recap some of those things, we had consensus on a large number of baseline conditions and then various level of agreements that were close to or almost close to consensus about the specific setback distances and where they apply. And all of this is uh, outlined in greater detail in a report that again, you're welcome to download and review and follow up with us if you have any additional questions. That's available here uh, at this website on the screen right now.